The HPV virus or human papilloma virus is to be found all over the world. It is ubiquitous and it has had an impact on the lives of millions of people. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the HPV virus. Join me. HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the world. More than 80% of all sexually active adults will contract the HPV virus at some time in their lifetimes. The HPV virus is a double-stranded DNA virus that infects the basal cells of superficial tissues in the human body such as the skin and the superficial cells of the mucosa, the lining of the gastrointestinal tract or the genitourinary tract. There are over 200 types of HPV virus, of which 40 of those can cause infections in the human genital area. And these can be divided into low-risk viruses and high-risk viruses. Among the low-risk viruses, we find the HPV type 6 and HPV type 11 strains of virus. And among the high-risk uh, types of virus, we find the HPV 16 and the HPV 18 types of virus. The virus enters the human body through breaks in the skin or the mucous membranes and takes up residence in the basal cells. Depending on the type of virus, it can either sit in the cell, in the cytosol of the cell, or it can integrate its genome into the genome of the human host cell. And as the basal cell develops, and it uh, travels to the surface of the tissue, the virus assembles, reassembles itself into whole virions or viruses. And as those cells reach the surface and are lost into the environment, the virus too is shed with those cells, giving the virus an opportunity to infect new hosts and to spread to new people. HPV infection can take many forms. In 90% of cases, the virus is cleared spontaneously and people are not even aware that they were infected by the virus. In other cases, the virus causes the uncontrolled division of cells in the body, in the tissue in which it is found. And this leads to the typical HPV lesions. These include cancers of the cervix, cancers of the vulvae, cancers of the penis, cancers of the anus, and head and neck cancers. Over 90% of all genital warts are caused by HPV type 6 and 11, whereas more than 70% of all cervical cancers are positive for HPV type 16 and 18. Most HPV infections are caused by casual skin contact or by sharing of fomites or objects such as washcloths or towels or clothing. In other cases, the infection can spread from mother to child in the case of newborns during pregnancy or during the delivery period. At other times, the virus is spread sexually. And for sexual spread, it is not necessary for there to be actual intercourse and transfer of fluids from one partner to the other. However, simple acts such as finger genital contact or the sharing of sex toys can lead to spreading of the virus among people. As a matter of fact, there are several examples of HPV-positive 
virgins reported. Recently, there has been an increase in the incidence of penile, anal, and oropharyngeal or head and neck cancers among men in the U.S. And this has been attributed to an increase in the spread of HPV viruses. Today, cervical cancer is the most common HPV-related cancer worldwide, with 600,000, over 600,000 cases per year and over 300,000 deaths. At one time, cervical cancer was the leading cause of death among women in the United States. Because of this historical high level of cervical cancer and cancer-related deaths, screening was introduced in the 1950s in the form of the pap smear. The pap smear led to a precipitous drop in the cervical cancer-related deaths among women in the United States. Now, during a pap smear, the doctor would use a brush or a scraper to collect cells from the cervix and it would then examine the cells under a microscope looking for certain changes that are caused by HPV infections. These changes can be divided into low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions, or L-cell, or high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions, or H-cell. L-cell includes the older CIN classification or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1, whereas the H cell includes the older CIN2, CIN2-3, and CIN3, which were higher lesions and they're therefore classified under the high risk. LCL also includes a category known as ASCUS or the acronym ASCUS, which stands for a typical scream of cells of undetermined significance. This ASCUS category includes atypical cells that are still not categorizable into either LCL or HCL. And this will change sometimes over time. ASCUS also has a secondary category, ASCUS H, which includes those ASCUS cells that have among them cells suspicious for H cell, that is, high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions. The ASCUS classification is a low-risk lesion and is handled as such. This means that L cell and CIN1 and ASCUS are treated the same way, they're managed the same way. And your physician would most likely ask you to come back for a repeat pap smear in a year to follow up on those lesions. Only 1% of L cells will progress to invasive cancer, whereas a full 12, 10 to 12 percent of eight cells will progress to invasive cancer. The high risk eight cell lesions are treated differently and usually require the removal of these abnormal cells. This is usually done with colonization, which can either be done with the leak procedure, the loop electrosurgical excisional procedure, or it can be done with a scalpel. The doctor excises the area, cuts out that area that is uh, abnormal. Physicians may also use lasers or they may use cryotherapy to freeze the abnormal area and so destroy those cells. Or they may require a complete hysterectomy, a total hysterectomy in certain cases. It is estimated that only 10% of L cells will progress to a higher level. So that CIN1 lesions would progress to CIN2 or 3 lesions only 10% of the time. But a full 57% will regress spontaneously and heal themselves. Among CIN3 lesions, however, only about 
30%, one third, will regress spontaneously. Your doctor may also require the HR, or high risk HPV DNA testing, which is a test to determine whether or not a patient has uh, infection with the high risk types of HPV virus, since this would change their prognosis and require a different approach to management. The HPV DNA tests or the HR-HPV DNA test can sometimes be positive, become negative, and then become positive again. And doctors are still not certain whether this is because of new infections or whether it is an activation, a reactivation of a previous infection that was lying dormant all the while. Unfortunately, natural immunity acquired through in clearing of an infection is unpredictable, and only about 40 to 60 percent of women develop immunity immediately after becoming infected. And this naturally acquired immunity often lasts for very short periods of time, less than a year. This is especially so with the HPV type 16, whereas with HPV type 18, it appears that the immunity that is acquired lasts for longer periods of time. Vaccine acquired immunity, on the other hand, leads to the production of higher levels of antibodies and generally lasts for six to 10 years. Prevention of HPV infection by the administration of a vaccine therefore seems to be a more practical approach to reducing the burden of HPV-related diseases. Towards this end, a vaccine was introduced in the United States during 2006, the Gardasil vaccine. Since the introduction of Gardasil, the rate of infection with vaccine strain-related HPV viruses has dropped by a whopping 80%. Compared to the 2003-2006 period, women between the ages of 15 to 24 in 2011 to 2014 had showed a 29% decrease in the incidence of cervical cancer, whereas in the 25 to 34 year age group, there was a 13% drop in cervical cancer. It is interesting to note that in women above the 35 age mark, showed no difference, no drop in the rate of cervical cancer. But we need to remember that they had not received the Gardasil vaccine. In 2009, the vaccine was approved for the use in young males as well. Today, the vaccine is indicated for people, both male and female, from the ages of 9 to the age of 26. The original Gardasil vaccine provided protection for four strains, the HPV-6, HPV-11, and the high strains, the high risk strains, HPV 16 and 18. More recently, Gardasil 9 has been introduced, which provides coverage for nine different HPV strains, including the original four. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was useful to you. Share the video, please. Leave your comments in the box below and support the channel by subscribing. Until the next video, stay healthy and stay safe.